the latest tech. I'm Alexa. I can answer your questions. Interviews. And we are evolving and we are seeing an amazing opportunity that is happening. Accessibility. Accessibility is, is one of our core values. It's even a part of our mission statement. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome to another edition of Double Tap TV. We've got a really exciting show for you guys today, so I hope you do stick around for all of it. Thank you guys so much for being here. Our email address, if you want to get in touch with us, as always, is feedback at ami.ca on Twitter and Facebook, at Double Tap Canada. Don't forget that hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap. And don't forget to be following our podcast, Double Tap Canada. You can get that each and every single week. I am Marco Flalo, joined each and every single week by Stephen Scott. Stephen... I noticed uh, something a little bit different about you today. What do you What do you got there? Is that something uh, new that you're holding up? And what is that? Uh, yes, that's right, Mark. Hey, everybody. Yes, this week I am uh, hand in my hand. I was hoping to wear this device, but I've I've misplaced the glasses. Welcome to Blind World, guys. Uh, you put things down, they just disappear. Um, so I'm back to my regular sunglasses here. But in my hand, I actually have. Uh, an Orcam MyEye Pro. Now this is a fantastic product, which is the size of a basically a small packet of chewing gum. And it actually would normally attach to the uh, right leg of my glasses uh, via magnets. Now, like I say, it's called MyEye 2. MyEye Pro is also the name it goes by. It comes from the Israeli-based company Orcam. And this device contains a camera on the front of it, and it lets me scan documents, uh, road signs, any printed text really, and it reads it aloud to me via a little speaker built in. It's quite cool, Mark. Yeah, pretty nice indeed. And you know, is this specifically for somebody who's blind or low vision? Not specifically, no. I mean, yes, of course, blind and low vision people like me get a lot of use out of this, a lot of benefit out of it, but really it's built for anyone who is what you might call print disabled. So someone who's dyslexic, for example, could really benefit from this. Now, you mentioned that this helps you read text aloud, uh, but when I was looking on their website preparing for this interview, uh, there's a lot of other features in that device, aren't there? Oh, there are. Uh, uh, tons of features. I mean, so tiny little device, chewing gum size, and yet it has so much in here as well as reading text, such as newspapers or books or even your computer screen. You know, sometimes you get a message up on the screen uh, and it'll maybe be telling you, today, for example, my computer just kept saying, just a moment, just a moment. I don't know what the moment was for. It certainly took longer than a moment, but I didn't know what was going on. So I was able to put on OrCam and it was telling me what the screen was saying. Um, you can also do lots of other nifty things as well. Uh, you can use the camera to identify faces. So let's say one day you and I actually get to meet again in person. Uh, I can seek you out in a restaurant now. You can't hide from me, Mark. Um, if I'm coming to meet you, I can find you. Um, and you can also identify products as well, using barcodes to help you go shopping or just know what cans are in the cupboard. And of course, all this is done by pressing the button on the side of the device or you can just talk to it and say, uh, identify face or, you know, find barcode or scan barcode. It's incredible. You know, back in, in 2019, we covered this product when you were, I think, at Sight Village in the UK. Yeah. Since then, has there been any major product changes? Yes, there have, but I'm not going to tell you about them. Uh, oh, okay. That might make for a pretty short episode in that case. Uh, okay, well, look, I'll be fair. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to tell you about them, but I am going to welcome Rafi Fisher from Orcam, who will. Okay, thank goodness, because I was I was worried because we got to hit twenty two minutes here. Okay, let let's take a quick uh, a quick break here, a short break. Okay, I promise it's going to be really really short, and we're going to come back with Ravi here on Double Tap TV. Now remember, if you've got any questions for us throughout the episode, you can email us to feedback at ami.ca. You can find us on Twitter and Facebook at Double Tap Canada with the hashtag Ask Double Tap. And of course, you can follow that podcast on uh, pretty much anywhere you get you get a podcast. We'll be right back here on Double Tap TV. He is Stephen Scott. I am Marco Flalo. Back in a moment. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash Double Tap. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome back to Double Tap TV. Now, before the break, we introduced you to the second generation of Orcam's MyEye, Orcam MyEye 2. This product claims to help people by turning the written word into audio, something that I'm sure that you can definitely imagine at home. I am Mark Lalo with Stephen Scott, and now joining us from Israel is Rafi Fisher, the Director of Communications for Orcam. 
Rafi, thank you for being here. We've been talking earlier on the show about some of the fantastic features of this new product. Now, the version we're discussing today is a redesign of the original MyEye, isn't it? So the form factor, which I'm, which I'm holding in my hand here, is quite similar. In fact, if you just you know glance at it quickly, it, it is very similar. But there are some certain distinct features that are really an upgrade from the previous uh, version. So let me just uh, demonstrate or, or talk about those uh, for a moment. So first of all, the embedded magnets. You know, the embedded magnets, of course, go on you know, any pair of glasses. There's a mount on the side here. I just snap on the device, you know, where the device is hands-free. Previously, they were, the magnets were outwardly shown. What I mean by that is that they were, you saw the two like, little silver disks on the outside. Um, and what we decided to do with this next uh, form factor is embed the magnets inside the, the, uh, the casing. You know, and so this way, we did have once in a blue moon, we had big issues of uh, the magnets coming out. Very rarely, but it was enough that we didn't want this to happen again. And so the best way we thought is just why not embed them so there's no risk of it falling out. So now the uh, indentations here are the actual magnets behind the casing. So that's number one. Number two, um, on either side of the visual sensor of really the, let's call it the modified smart camera, uh, that actually picks up the visual information, there are an LED on either side. And we slightly tweaked the LEDs, upgraded them so they have even more of a, of a, of a um, illumination power. Um, and the real significant difference you can't even see, which is the chip. The uh, chip, we, the microprocessor chip, which really is the brains, the whole you know, raison d'etre of Orkim, uh, inside here has been upgraded. And now I think it's about 25% uh, longer battery life, as well as around 25% longer, pro a faster processing power. So really, you know, it was just, this is our opportunity to, to, to do so. And so the, the uh, new upgrades, or I should say, yeah, the upgrades to, this, to the software that I'm going to demonstrate today, the voice activated you know, smart reading, um, actually uh, cannot function on the older version, uh, I believe. And, but the newer one is capable of this and also capable of future upgrades. So we thought, you know, ahead of time, not having to go through this process again. So when we have other upgrades in mind, it's gonna all be handled on this exact platform. So no, no worries there. And it's those features that we want to talk about. Now, as I said earlier, using the MyEye to read menus and get access to printed text that I might not have been able to as easily before is great, but these new features take that experience to a whole new level. Absolutely, the text-to-speech platform that we developed you know, totally in-house to me is, is such a breakthrough in the sense that, like you're saying, it really reads text from any surface. And certainly the printed text examples you gave, also obviously from a smartphone screen, a computer screen, you know, and even it actually reads from a curved uh, a soda can, you know, like a can of cola that's curved. And the reason why we have that capability, it took some time to develop that, is for medicine, for medication. So people have their medication bottles, which are of course curved, to read the instructions on them, you know, not have to like, because you can't flatten out that container obviously, and so it has that capability. Um, but yes, what you're alluding to is smart reading, which takes, you know, like you said, the text-to-speech reading, the OCR built into this device to the next level. Because what's involved with smart reading is a couple of things. First of all, it's voice activated. So nothing to do with either pointing or, or, or pressing, you know, buttons on it or swiping because, you know, we have that touch-sensitive uh, swipe pad over here. Um, it's all about asking the device, sorry, yeah, asking the device the text you want, the text of interest to you, whether you know it's there or don't know it's there. Okay, let's see an action then, Rafi. Okay, so now with the page in hand, I'm just gonna double tap twice, you know, which is kind of redundant, I guess, but I'll double tap on the device. I'll say smart reading, and Orkin will take that famous photo of the text. Smart reading. Okay, so I have the text in here. In the device, so now I'm taking off the device. I'm going to put it close to the, close to you, so you can hear it. And let's first start off with um, asking it about dates. So I have on here, uh, from the museum page here, four different Fine dates job. of exhibitions. Let's okay, so I'm going to say, read dates. Found four dates. First result: the ultimate predator starting November 11, 2019. Second result: butterfly conservatory starting December 3, 2019. Third result, our blue planet starting May 1st, 2000. So what happened just now is Orkim found the dates, but it didn't just read the dates themselves. It wanted to give me the context. A date itself really wouldn't give me much, right? So it actually read what was, what was before the date in terms of the name of the exhibition and the word starting, and then it had the date. So that was, you know, very helpful. It, it jumped right to that. And, and below the dates here, I have different ticket prices. Let me, let me get to that now. 
Read amounts. I am listening. Read amounts. Found for amounts. Entrance fees. Adult twenty three dollars. Student eighteen dollars. Senior eighteen dollars. Children thirteen dollars. So again, it read the type of fee because if it just said twenty three dollars, I wouldn't know what that is. But it said entrance fees. Adult twenty three dollars. It read the header and the type of uh, ticket that it was. Um, you can also ask for phone numbers, and right below here, there's actually one phone number. No See, he thinks I'm speaking to it, but you know, it doesn't. We're not quite that smart yet. Uh, read phone numbers. Found one phone number. Entrance fees: adult twenty-three dollars. Student eighteen dollars. Senior eighteen dollars. Children thirteen dollars. Website AMH. So this example really just okay. It's giving me more information now about the address. But it's really, this really impresses me every time because the phone number, unlike the other font here, which is quite dark, it's in very light gray at the bottom of the page. And it read it just like it read everything else without a problem. Um, something else I want to show you is finding a keyword. Like you're reading a newspaper article or a page in a book. Let's say you, you just really want the, the, a, a certain word and that will give you, you know, the information you want. And what happens is when you ask for a keyword, it doesn't just say the word. Just like with the dates and the entrance fees, it gives you context. So we'll skip before to the previous comma or period of the sentence to give you a little bit of context. So I said dates, and now I was reading the dates again. Um, so it's very, very attentive, right? So I have the word mission here that appears only one time. Okay, okay. Uh, find mission. So there you go. I read the whole sentence actually where mission was contained within. And if it was, let's say, three instances of mission, it would read each and every instance. Okay, first instance, read me that. Second instance, read me that. Um, another very cool thing about this device, and this is something that we worked hard on, and it's actually, oh, all right, I'm going to exit for now. Exit. Okay, is, and this is actually only available in the English version. We're trying to get it to the other languages because this is available. The smart reading feature is available in, in, let's say, the major languages, you know, French, Spanish, German, uh, and Japanese also. Um, but there's one, at one little uh, sub-feature of smart reading that's only available in English at the moment, which is read the headlines. And this is such a cool feature because read the headlines involves having a newspaper, like, you know, like a full page of a newspaper, like if it's a, a full size, it usually has two, three, four, it can have six articles on it, you know? And you can, act, you can ask OrCam, read the headlines, and it will read just the headlines of each article on that page. And then if one catches your, it catches your fancy, you wanna read that article, you can say, read third article, and it will read you the entire third article. Um, and just get to the text that you want and without having to go through the whole you know, page to get to you, what you're finally looking for or what's, what's, what's of not of interest or what's of interest to you. Wow, that, that really is a lot of new and exciting features. Now, Rafi, stay with us. We're going to take a quick break here on Double Tap TV and come back. Uh, we're in conversation with Rafi Fisher, the Director of Communications at OrCam. He's going to stick around and come back and tell us more about the features of the new OrCam My iQ. Steven Scott and Mark Aflalo with you each and every single week here on Double Tap TV. Again, don't forget to get involved. Our email address is feedback at ami.ca. On Twitter and Facebook, it's at Double Tap Canada with that hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap. And of course, don't forget to subscribe, like, and review the podcast edition of Double Tap Canada. Stick around. Back more in a second. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash Double Tap. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome back to Double Tap TV. I am Mark Aflalo with Stephen Scott by my side as always. And this week also by my side is Ravi Fisher, the Director of Communications for a company we've been talking about this week, OrCam. And he's going to tell us about all the new exciting features of My i 2 the device that can help people with print disabilities read the printed word in audio form as well as a ton of other features, right, Stephen? Absolutely. Thanks, Mark. Yes, there are lots of cool features already. But, uh, Rafi, I know you've got some other tricks up your sleeve, haven't you? I I'm thinking here about things like object recognition, that kind of thing. Tell us more about these developing features. Up until now, OrkinMyI is certainly a communications device, right? It's meant to be used in conjunction with a white cane or a seeing eye dog, right? Those are mobility tools, right? Or mobility you know, vehicles, let's, let's call them. And OrkinMyI is a communicator. Um, but now we're actually going into that area of not, not in terms of any kind of length, but in terms of your immediate surroundings, identifying what your surroundings are. 
Uh, and that involves a few things. First of all, object rec recognition, as you mentioned. You know, with, um, with a chair, a chair is, you know, there's no standard chair, right? Chair can come in all different shapes, styles, colors, you know, but there's uh, only, you know, one Stephen Scott. There's only one of you with your face, and font is standard. You know, that, that's uniform everywhere you go. But, but, you know, a chair, it's an object that falls in different parameters. So we're working on orientation, which will identify certain key things, such as, like, a coffee mug slash a cup, a chair, a door, doorknob, you know, ascending stairs, you know, that kind of window, that kind of thing, table, you know, and also who's at the table? Is there a man or a woman or both at the table? You know, that kind of thing when you enter a room. So really giving you more information, you know, that, that's in your immediate surroundings so you can, you know, you know proceed accordingly. Um, and there's an extension of the, of the orientation feature. Besides just identifying objects, we're working on it actually guiding you to certain objects. I'll give you some examples. Uh, a door, right? A door typically has a doorknob, otherwise you really can't do much with it, right? So with the doorknob, to access that door, um, you know, we have that, you know, the pointing gesture to activate reading that we pioneered, right? So we're taking that to the next level in terms of Orkane will guide your hand to that doorknob by a series of ascending or descending beeps, right? It's kind of like the game you played when you were a kid, like you're hot, you're cold, you know, if you're getting near something. So Orkane, as you get closer, the intensity of the beeps will increase, and if you're farther away from it, it will decrease. And it will guide your hand until you get to that doorknob, and then you can open the door. And when you get in the room, in terms of getting to the table, you know, in terms of that, that surface, it will, it will guide you as well. So it's really, you know, very exciting, you know, to, to talk about. And we are in the process of actually implementing this. And so um, I, I, we have already, you know, like a, a decent demo going, though. But, um, you know, I really, you know, this is actually, it's interesting. The orientation feature, which is available right now, on our devices, but in beta form, is the first and only time we've actually released something that's not, you know, in our minds, perfect, as perfect as possible, like which, like what smart reading, you know, has reached. Um, I think the reasoning behind it was just to give our users, uh, you know, a taste of what's to come. You know, they can play around with it a little bit, but just know that this is this is like the next level, and you'll certainly get that as part of our standard, you know, you know, software update process, which you know involves, uh, you know, Orkimaya as a. Uh, a lot of people know works completely offline. That's one of its really, you know, unique points, I believe, you know, among many. Um, and so, but the only time when Wi-Fi comes into play is when we have actually those software updates. And so when we have the orientation feature finalized, that will be downloaded automatically when the user charges his or her device, you know, at home to get that orientation feature loaded back on the device. And actually, speaking of um, uh, new uh, updates, uh, we actually have in the next couple weeks a new software new software update coming up. It's version 9.10, uh, and it doesn't have the orientation feature, but it does have a, a more robust body of voice commands that are for the operation of the device. So smart reading is to navigate text, right? But these, these increased vocal features, uh, the, the R&D calls them vocal commands, I call them voice commands, because that's more, you know, uh, I think, you know, uh, normal speak, let's say, um, and, uh, or less techie speak. And anyway, so, these features, like like for now, for the for the facial recognition, I have to tap on the device, keep my finger here to to uh, record your face. Now you'll be able to just literally say start facial recognition. It will take that person's face, do the snapshots, and record and you record the name with your voice, and that's it. No touching the device, you know. So it's even more accessible. Let's call it, you know. So that's uh and that's coming out. That's finalized. That's coming out in the coming weeks. Amazing. Rafi, thanks so much for coming on to Double Tap TV this week and sharing the latest news on Orcam with us. Another interesting piece of tech, Stephen, you know, but here's a question that we didn't really get to, which is how much does something like this cost? Because I know when we talked about this the first time at uh, TechShare Pro and a lot of the other, you know, specialized tech, it tends to be pretty expensive. Well, you know what they say, Mark, you get what you pay for. Are you sitting down there, Mark? Uh, no, I'm standing, but I think I, I could survive. OK, well, let's hope you can. Uh, the price in Canada is just under six thousand dollars. Wow. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> I know. I know. It's a lot of cash. It is. And, and you know, I will say there are payment plans from some of the companies selling this, which I think would be necessary, including Orcam themselves. The info is all at orcam.com. But yes, it is definitely a considered purchase. And yes, there are a lot of apps out there that can do similar jobs. But as you've probably found out today, maybe something you weren't aware of is all the other features that you get as a result of having the actual device. Well, you know, you, you think about a device like this and, you know, bubblegum size that really connects to your glasses. 
that is incredibly small. Getting all that technology into a package that small cannot be an easy feat, can it? No, definitely not. There's a huge amount of technology inside this. And yes, I know that I, I get it all the time. People always come back to me and say, yes, but I've got an app that can do the same. Um, yes, you have, but that means you have to have your phone with you and out in public all the time. And this way you can have this device with you. You can use it when you need to uh, without having to bring out. I mean, think about a crowded train station. and You want to read the board and know when the next train coming in is. You don't necessarily want to pull your phone out and be angling it up at the board. You know, someone comes along on a bike and just whips the phone out of your hand. You know, that, that's the danger of this. So, you know, and as blind people, we have to be very conscious of that. This avoids that problem. I know it's an expensive solution, but at the same token, in some government schemes, we'll offer you the, the ability to get this through, uh, you know, workplace uh, enhancements. Some benefit systems might allow you to get that. There are ways to get this. Um, and, you know, I think it's something that if you're looking, at least what we're trying to do here is show you what options are out there. Um, and then talk about it in a very sensible way rather than just say, well, there's an app that can do that as well. Um, it's a bit disingenuous and a bit unfair to the product, I think. So what do you guys at home think? What, is this something that you'd buy and something that you'd use on a daily basis? I'm curious to know and, and do let us know. Keep the comments coming. The email address is feedback at ami.ca. You could find us on Facebook and Twitter at Double Tap Canada with that hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap. And of course, follow the podcast each and every single week and Double Tap Canada, which is on uh, Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on AMI-audio. On behalf of Stephen Scott, I am Mark Flalo. Thank you guys for joining us this week. We'll catch you up uh, next week on another edition of Double Tap TV. Thanks for being here. Hosted by Mark Flalo and Stephen Scott. Executive producer, Mark Flalo. Editing, Jordan Steves and Mark Flalo. Motion graphics, Will Attar. Voiceover, Anna Vicino. Production assistants, Wendy Kaufman and Zachary Flalo. Social media, Wendy Kaufman. Integrated described video specialist, Ron Rickford. Coordinating producer, Jennifer Johnson. Director of production, Kara Nye. Director of programming, Brian Perdue. VP content development and programming, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2021, Accessible Media Inc.